Hey everybody, Peter Zine here, coming to you from the hills above Monaco and San Marino. Uh, Monaco is one of the microstates here in Europe, uh, pretty much they're all in Europe now that I think about it. And I'm not talking about here like small places like Luxembourg. I'm talking about microstates that are just a few square miles. Um, Monaco here is under a square mile itself, second smallest state in the world. Uh, the existence of microstates is kind of a weird little story. Basically, you get a geography that is rugged enough that little patches can be carved out and they're difficult to access from other places. So, for example, Liechtenstein is in, occupies a specific mountain pass between Austria and Switzerland. And either they've been able to be tough enough to conquer that you leave them be, or they're useful as kind of a diplomatic go-between. In the case of Monaco, it traded hands a lot. Uh, from the post-Roman period uh, into the Italian civil wars and reunification, ultimately into World War II and ever since then independence. Um, and now, of course, Monaco is most famous for the Grand Prix, which plays, well, by the time you guys see this, it'll already be over, uh, and gambling. Um, basically, if you've seen James Bond, you've seen Monaco. Uh, it's also, I can say this with uh, authority, a great place to have lunch. Uh, microstates rarely really play a big role. Uh, I mean, they're micro. Uh, but every once in a while, a certain constellation of factors comes together and makes them really matter. So the one that matters right now is San Marino. Now, that's not here in France. That one is down in Italy. Uh, but during the Ukraine war, the Russians have discovered that most of their normal avenues for intelligence gathering have been shut off. Uh, because instead of just having the Americans go after uh, their spies, everybody in Europe did at the same time. And one of the things you normally do when you have a spy is, if you get caught, you just redeploy them somewhere else in the world. Well, when something like two-thirds of the Russian diplomatic corps and spies were declared persona non grata in some form, everyone started exchanging biographical information on all the agents. And so you could no longer deploy those people anywhere in the world unless you had a government was like, oh yeah, we're okay with a bunch of Russian spies, that's fine. And that doesn't happen. So basically, something like half the roster of Russian intelligence agents got vaporized, um, and they're going to have to be deployed for other things. Uh, San Marino comes in because San Marino has been a location where some of these people are getting recycled. And in addition to like the normal money laundering things that microstates are famous for, uh, San Marino is now providing diplomatic cover for the Russians to get whoever they want into the European Schengen zone, which is the free transport union that the Europeans have. So the Italians are starting to get a little aggroed at San Marino for serving as this bastion for Russian intelligence, diplomatic, and financial power in the heart of their country. Hasn't gotten to the point now yet that they're starting to renegotiate forcibly some of the treaties that allow San Marino to function, but the Italians are starting to look at it.